the U.S. Supreme Court issued a major order related to President Trump's eligibility to run for office again. And this order of theirs, it was a major victory for both President Trump as well as for his campaign, given the fact that at this very moment, they're embroiled in at least four different serious lawsuits across the whole country. However, in order to explain what this ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court was, as well as what it means going forward in the 2024 race, let me back up for a quick moment and set the stage for you properly regarding how we got to this point. Now, to start with, as I'm sure you're very well aware, the Republican primary is quite full, with all the different candidates jockeying for some airtime in order to hopefully supplant President Trump as the Republican nominee. And some of these candidates have gotten, you can say, creative with how they're trying to win the primary. For instance, you have Asa Hutchinson literally paying people to donate to his campaign. You have Vivek Ramaswamy posting exercise videos of himself over on social media. You have Governor Chris Christie going to all the major left-leaning news outlets to discuss the faults of President Trump. But then, aside from all these candidates, you also have some, you can say, even more creative approaches to get both name recognition while also at the same time trying to knock President Trump out of the running altogether. Case in point, you have this man right here, John Anthony Castro. Now, Mr. Castro is a tax consultant down in Texas, but then also, more relevant to our discussion, he's currently a candidate for the Republican primary, given the fact that he has filled out paperwork to run for president as a Republican. Now, you probably haven't heard of Mr. Castro and his campaign before watching this episode, evidenced by the fact that he has never appeared in any nationwide polls, and also evidenced by the fact that according to records from the Federal Elections Commission, well, Mr. Castro has thus far raised exactly zero dollars for his campaign, aside from the $20 million that he himself invested into his own campaign. And so if you were in Mr. Castro's situation without much money and without much support, what would you do? Would you A, make an appeal through social media directly to voters, laying out your ideas and building a grassroots base? Would you B, subscribe to the Facts Matter YouTube channel in order to get honest news injected directly into your newsfeed? Or would you C, try to get President Trump disqualified from being able to serve in office and in that process, make yourself a little bit famous? Well, the obvious answer is B, I mean C, you try to get him disqualified, which is exactly the path that Mr. Castro took. Mr. Castro filed a lawsuit in federal court down in Florida seeking to have President Trump disqualified from having his name appear on any ballots. His legal argument is that according to his reading of the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, President Trump should be disqualified from running for office because he engaged in insurrection. Just for your reference, here is exactly what Section 3 of the 14th Amendment actually says. Quote, no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States or under any state who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any state legislature or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. Now, as you likely guessed just by listening to it, this amendment was enacted shortly after the U.S. Civil War in order to keep former members of the Confederacy out of the American Congress. And when you scan the language of this section in the law, you'll notice how particular it is regarding the crimes which can get a person banned from serving in office. There are, in fact, two very specific crimes that are mentioned by name in Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. You have insurrection and or rebellion. And those aren't just words insurrection and rebellion are actual legal crimes which are laid out in section 18 of the U.S. Criminal Code, subsection 2383. And so people, politicians, and the media might use the word insurrection when referring to what took place on January 6th, but from a legal perspective, no one has been found guilty of something called insurrection. In fact, there was an article in the New York Times which laid it out quite succinctly, quote, insurrection charges are considered difficult to prove and are exceedingly rare. While many people have called the events of January 6th an insurrection, the Justice Department has not charged any rioters with that crime. In addition to the handful of seditious conspiracy charges against members of two militias, the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys, prosecutors have charged various rioters with such crimes as assaulting police officers, obstructing an official congressional proceeding, and trespassing. And so, to use the 14th Amendment to try and disqualify President Trump from running for office because he engaged in insurrection is a little bit difficult to prove given the fact that neither him nor anyone else on that day has been charged with the actual crime of insurrection. But that is the move that Mr. Castro made in his lawsuit.